So you burn it, chip it, burn it, chip it, burn it, chip it until you get your final form that you like. There's only uh, two master carvers in the whole world too. Uh, Cordy Blake and George Wilson. Um, and they're well into their 70s, so it's like a lifelong journey. Are they training new carvers? Yeah. Right on. Uh, one of the ones that they trained was Dave Severance. He's the one that made this one. Um, and he's considered a master apprentice. His mentor, George Wilson, said that he could be considered a master carver, but he said, um, my mentor's still alive, so I'm still an apprentice. to help the people out. Yeah. Getting a grocery store would be nice. We're in like a food desert right here. There's a uh, one time, I think it was two years ago, there is a mudslide from here to Crescent City. And that's where usually everyone gets their groceries, but that mudslide made it to where it was four hours to get to Crescent City because the traffic was so backed up. And so the closest place to get groceries was all the way in Eureka. Oh. Yeah. Just for eggs. I'll give you the time period throughout the year. So first starts out with the lamprey eels. They'll come in like December as well as the winter steelhead. And then after that comes the um, sturgeon around April. There's green and white sturgeon uh, in the river. Um, green sturgeon get about eight feet and the white surgeon can get as long as his canoe. The reason why it's called a gill net is because the fish, they swim into the net and then their head will get through but their bodies won't. And so when they try to pull out, that uh, net grabs its gills. And so that's when they get caught and then you see the bobber going up and down. And you pick them up before the sea lion can. Um, so we would use the net out of iris. You would whittle like red with uh, into the uh, bobbers or corks. And then we would use a grapevine for the uh, rope and then a big rock for an anchor. We're salmon people, we're canoe people. And so this river is like our, our life, you know? And so the government, they didn't give us our right back. And so there is a group of about a hundred individuals. Uh, we call them the fish warriors. And they went out to the mouth over here. There's about a hundred of them. And um, they started peacefully protesting for their right to fish. So everybody went out there in their boats. And when the government heard about this big Indian uprising, um, they sent three entities out, the um, FBI, the U.S. Army, and the Federal of, uh, uh, the Bureau of Indian Affairs, BIA, and uh, in full tactical gear, like bulletproof vests, M16s, and they also had jet boat motors. And so what they would do is they would come, crash into the boats and try to knock into the water, take your net. And um, there, it lasted a few years where it was just back and forth. At that time, we had to like fish at nighttime. We had all blacked out fishing gear. Um, and we would just fish 24 seven whenever we could. And then the government would try and catch us. Uh, and a lot of people were fined, a lot of people went to jail, a lot of people went missing. Uh, it was a pretty bad time. And uh, one day though, there is this individual by the name of uh, Awok Raymond Matt. Um, and he went out with his fishing gear 
the uh, police came, rammed his boat, took his net, and he said, hey, that's stealing. You're stealing my net from me. Um, give me it back. And they're like, no, you know, you're not supposed to be out here fishing. It's illegal. And so um, you're going to have to go to court. Well, he went to court, and the, uh, the judge ruled that if he pays just one dollar, he could get his net back. And he said, no, I'm not paying you for what you stole from me. That's my net. Give me my net back. And so he appealed the decision. And then it kept on going to different court, different court, different court, until it finally made it to the, um, the Supreme Court over in Washington, D.C., where there are six uh, judges on the panel. And uh, they... Um, all agreed that it's his net and he has the right to fish that river and let's just put it into all this and give them all their right to fish that. so that's why we're the only tribe in California that's able to fish Everybody has good days, everybody has bad days, uh, everybody wins, everybody loses. Uh, that's not necessarily what creators looking for. Uh, creators looking for your output or your effort that you put into uh, your daily life. So if you only have 20%, 50% or 120%, did you give that 20, 50 or 120%? Because in creators eyes, if you did that, you gave 100%.